Localization. It's an elementary and quintessential part of the success of video games. Different languages fundamentally affect how stories and characters are perceived and therefore redefine the fandom for a particular region. Generally speaking, there is a strong focus on games that are originally in English and then translated into Japanese or vice versa, but other languages often fall under the radar. With my channel revolving mostly around Crash Bandicoot, I am going to observe what the games of that series look like in other regions of the world. Ah yes, Mother Russia. A country very renowned for its politics and beverages also houses a very brief and unnoticed history of crash localization that is not based on bootlegs and piracy. And since I went above and beyond to get my hands on copies of the only two legitimate Russian language games the series has to offer, I figured a video would be the best way to share it with you. Let's go over the general structure of the video. This video essay is largely based on an old university term paper I wrote in one of my linguistic translation classes. I will mainly restrict myself to translations of proper nouns, that is names of characters, locations and other miscellaneous things. I will not attempt to cover titles of episodes or missions because I am absolutely bound to miss a ton of intertextual references and couldn't feasibly explore those on a satisfying scale in the same video. The names I am going to cover will first be given in their original English forms. After that, the official Russian translations will be given and, to the best of my ability, then back translated into English. I will break down how those names were formed or what they are based on. I have split the names into several groups that are marked with timestamps as well in order to structure the video better. And just to reiterate, the only games covered in this video are Crash of the Titans and Crash Mind over Mutant, as those are the only Crash games to this day to have been officially localized in Russia. Let's get moving. Crash of the Titans was released under the name of Crash Bitva Titanov. Both titles are inspired by the 1981 film Clash of the Titans, while the English title is a very smooth pun that is achieved by replacing Clash with Crash, the same logic does not transfer easily into other languages. The Russian version is instead a bit more on the nose. Bitva Titanov is the Russian title of the film and has therefore simply been chosen as the subtitle of the game. So translated back into English, the Russian title would be Crash Clash of the Titans, or if you wanted to roll off the tongue a little bit better, Crash Battle of the Titans. Crash Mind Over Mutant was also released under quite a punny title, being based on the saying Mind Over Matter, which can mean the overcoming of physicality through the power of the mind or the will, a clever nod to the mind-controlling abilities that Crash makes use of in the game. This is again obviously very difficult to translate into Russian, so another quite on-the-nose solution has been found. Known as Kresh Pavelitsye Mutantov in Russia, the superiority over all other mutants is highlighted as the title translates back as Crash, Lord, Ruler or Arbiter of the Mutants. Moving on to names of main characters. The titles of the game already give away that Crash's name has just been phonetically adapted into Russian but otherwise been kept the same. This makes sense, as at this point, although not having been localized into Russian before outside of bootlegs, Crash is very much a household name and is also branded with a great value of recognition at that point. Most of the other main characters follow the same pattern as they are just as established as the series protagonist. So alongside Crash Bandicoot, you also see Coco Bandicoot, Crunch Bandicoot and Aku Aku. On the villain side of things, most names have received a similar treatment. We have Uka Uka, Dr. Neo Cortex, Nina Cortex and Tiny. Embryo's name received a slight addition in form of an extra N added to the end. That way his name Embryon reflects the Russian word for embryo, which is Embryon. Engine, however, did not make the transition as smoothly though. While phonetically still consistent with the original pronunciation, the spelling as N-Jin loses the implication of him having a first name that starts with N, just like the other scientists in the game.
The two games in question introduce common enemies called minions. These are given telling names, which typically highlight two aspects, their species and another additional aspect ranging from their occupation, disposition or character trait. Sadly, they didn't all translate too well. Crash of the Titans introduced the player to five of such types, Ratnitions, Koalas, Doom Monkeys, Voodoo Bunnies and Brat Girls. In Russian, these are known as Krysa, Koala, Makaka Ubica, Krolik Voodoo and Merzavka, respectively. Krysa and Koala are simply just the species, Rat and Koala. Translated back into English, Makaka Ubica would be killer or murder macaques, further specifying which kind of monkey they are. It's notable that for the sequel, the names in the bestiary have been changed to Abiziana Ubica, i.e. killer monkeys. But their voice lines have not been adapted to that change, so they still refer to themselves as macaques. Krolik Voodoo is a reasonably accurate translation, though to encapsulate the associations with the word bunny, a diminutive form could have been used, like Krolchonak or even Zajcik. The word Merzavka is a curious case, as it is a made-up feminine form of the word Merzavitz, which translates to something along the lines of scoundrel or even scum. Mind of a Mutant introduced two new minions, Znu and Slappy. Znu was just taken as it is and adapted to Russian spelling, so it's also Znu. Slappy, on the other hand, became Robochlop, meaning Roboslap or Roboclap. Starting off with the OG, the Spike is a mutated porcupine named after his characteristically spiky aesthetic. His Russian name, Vredin, highlights the danger this creature radiates though. The name is a nominalized form of the adjective Vredni, meaning harmful or mean. So for all intents and purposes his name might as well just be Meany. The Ratsicle's name really speaks for itself. This ice-imbued rat received a similar name in the translation, being Chladokrys. The first half of that name is an old Russian word that can be translated as chill or the cold, whereas the second part is the root of the word for rat, so they are basically cold rats or rats of the cold. To heat things up a little, Magmadon is a mutated tortoise with fiery powers. Looks like the translators were afraid of burning their fingers on that one though, since his name was just kept as Magmadon, being virtually unchanged. And just like with the other titans, looking at the sludge, the name is basically the game. His Russian name is essentially a personification of slime, the word sliz. So sliznerak can therefore be translated as slimer. Battlers get a uniquely punny name in English, as it is a play on both bat and battle. This, however, works extremely poorly in other languages. Mish Lin, however, is also extremely difficult to break down. The first half literally means mouse, which is actually taken from the Russian word for bat, which is letuchaya mish, literally translated as flying mouse. The Lin part uh, puzzles me to this day, though. Lin can refer to tench, a type of fish, but I fail to see the correlation here. Interestingly, Mischling sounds somewhat similar to the German word Mischling, which means something like mix, but is mostly used to refer to crossbreeds, a word that could describe many of these titans from a certain point of view, maybe, but certainly not the battler. If anyone has any idea what that name could possibly mean, leave a comment below. The final brawler titan is another easy one. Not only is his English name Grimly, but so is his Russian name. Incredible precision is definitely one of the greatest qualities of the snipe. The name Yizvila is derived from the word Yizvit, which can mean something like the verb to needle, 
or to precisely pierce or sting. It can also be used to describe someone's sarcastic and provoking behavior with words, which reveals another side of this type. The name can henceforth be interpreted as the Needler. The stinky stench's greatest weapon is his unbearable odor. His partial basis on a skunk, skuns in Russian, is also what his name Skunser is based on, essentially being skunker in English. Electric appears like a fitting name for a mutated eel with electric powers. The Russian translation does not appear to see these creatures as eels though, for they are named Psevdougar, literally meaning pseudo-eel. The only explanation I have for the pseudo-prefix is that they are simply no ordinary eels, but his electric abilities are definitely not implied in his name. However, the TK's telekinetic prowess very much gives him his name. The Russian version takes a similar route, but instead of just taking the two letters, they wrote out the pronunciation of both letters as TK. The English counterpart to that would be spelling it out as TK. A titan full of physical strength is the Gore. His fur appears to also be one of his most characteristic features, as it was used as the groundwork for the Russian name Sherstyuga, which is derived from the word Sherst, meaning fur. So just because it's really funny, a back translation could very well just be furry. Although the name makes it quite obvious, the rhino roller appears to not be half rhino in the Russian version, but instead a half dinosaur with the name Dinakat. The second half of his name still refers to his means of movement though, being derived from the verb Katatsa, meaning to ride or to drive, or in this case even to roll. So his gravestone could very well say Dino Roller. Busting out the big guns now, Shalofant received a very straightforward Russian translation. Branislon is comprised of Branya, meaning shell or armor, and Slon, meaning elephant. So nothing really changes here. This is to be subverted though when we get to the possibly most mind-boggling name change of them all. Half Scorpion, half Gorilla. Scorparilla is very much the queen of the titans, but the Russian localization team seemed to have other plans and promptly changed her name to, get this, Godzilla. It's a Godzilla reference, while sneaking in a reference to the word God. It's difficult to accurately translate that word though. To cut it short though, it's a formal classification for species which included all land animals, excluding some birds and mammals, but isn't used in science nowadays anymore. It's weird. It's wacky. It can also be used as an insult along the lines of bastard. What's most odd about this though is that the name could have just worked as it was. Scorpion in Russian is Skarpion and Gorilla is Gorilla. But I don't want to linger here for too long. Thankfully, we can swiftly move on from this atrocity to a real freak. Yaktopus's name is a portmanteau of the interjection yuck and octopus, one of the animals it's comprised of. Laughing may be the best cure to everything, which this titan seems to take to heart. In the Russian version, his name is Chachatafon, a combination of the onomatopoetic verb chachotet, which means to laugh out loud and the suffix fon to allude to his musical talents. As for a back translation, I feel like lol is a somewhat timely equivalent to hachotet, since it literally stands for laughing out loud. So his name would be lolphone or lolphone. While not traditionally quite a titan, Nina's spiderbot goes by the name of Arachnina, which is also the same name in Russian, thankfully. It's Arachnina. Finally, some miscellaneous names can be observed. Cortex's robot of destruction, the Duminator, is known as Grabatronik, with the word Grob as root. So literally looking at it, his name means something similar to Gravinator, or maybe even Deathinator. And I shall call this robot the Duminator! Yeah, yeah! A robot the Yanazavum! Grabatronic! 
While the NV device in English is a pun on the word envy, the Russian name focuses on the aspect of addiction being named Zavista after the word Zavisimus, meaning addiction. I present to you the NV! A few minor omissions. Madame Amberley's Academy of Evil is mentioned in a cutscene in the English version. In the Russian version, Nina refers to just a private school, though. Oh, I used to be the queen of Madame Amberley's private school. And now I'm stuck with the dregs of society. Это после того, как я была первой ученицей в частном пансионе. А теперь меня окружают отбросы общества. And another really obscure and super minor omission is Coco's Transpalupa, which in actuality is just a purple wrench. It has no name in Russian whatsoever. Okay, okay, hand me the Transpalupa. Okay, <laughs> the purple thingy. Ah! Ладно, дай мне инструмент. Okay, <laughs> штуку. I also noticed a tiny little detail of localization in the first frame of the cutscene, Kleptobraniac from Mind of a Mutant. It features Crash dealing a comic punch with the word POW on it. In the Russian version, this was altered to say BACH. And with that, I have covered all notable official name translations from English to Russian in the Crash series. I really wanted to try something different for once, and I hope the video turned out somewhat enjoyable or interesting. Let me know if you'd be interested in more videos like this about other language versions. Those could be structured in a less dry fashion and instead be streamlined to give some of the most interesting highlights, tidbits and differences in comparison to the English original only. As for other YouTube content, the Crash Boom Bang dub will be kind of on its way relatively soon, I'm kind of working on it, we'll see, we'll see, we'll see. But some work still needs to be done. I don't know if I can come up with any content regarding Crash 4 as of yet, but I'm definitely excited about the game nonetheless. As always, thanks for watching and see you next time. Yeshki!